check your seat. What is the benefit? Why is the harvest necessary? The first, the harvest is key to joy and fulfillment. And one of the early fathers was it Aristotle that said, happiness is the major objective of most human lives. Most of the things that human beings do is aim that let me be happy. One of these keys to joy, one of these keys to fulfillment is this harvest. Number two, harvest is key to rewards. Is key to rewards. God is a rewarder of the harvester. John chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He said, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. For they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth that harvest receiveth wages. Abba, God is not a talkative. He is not a liar. You cannot be reaping the harvest and be bankrupt of wages. That is to be a, a reaper, a harvester. He puts you on another salary scale. Different from what is your scale in your office. The reason why I have not asked this church to put me on a salary is that the scale I am on as a harvester, the church can't pay it. Can't. If I should say, church, fix so and so for me as a monthly salary. Yes, we hear it. That's the truth. Which is the scale that heaven is as comfortably placed. He that repeat receiveth wages. Don't tie your life to your earthly salary. Now connect to a heavenly salary scale. You realize that what you are receiving in your office can become like a daily pay compared to what heaven will organize for you. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I sign for wages. In the name of Jesus, I sign for wages. I am available to be on your scale for wages in the name of Jesus. So the harvest is key to joy, to fulfillment. Do it with this mentality, with this revelation. Both to you whose house we are using as a harvest ban. And the person sitting there coordinating the harvest. Your joy no devil can temper with. Your fulfillment, no devil can temper with. And your rewards, no devil can temper with. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Thirdly, the harvest is key to honor. Honor. It's key to honor. Why do I say so? In the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 28, he said, everybody read it together. One, two, go. In the multitude of people is the king honor. The easiest way, one of the easiest ways to show God you honor him is to gather for him people. <laughs> Somebody who is, is now asking, what has that got to do with me? A church 
with a bigger gathering of souls is honoring God more than an altar that is empty of altar call. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. You want to show God that you honor him. Gather souls. Look at your neighbor. Say, gather souls. Look at your another person. Say, gather souls. What has that got to do with now? So if in the multitude of people is the king's honor. So when you gather people, you honor God. And when you honor God, he honors you. That's First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. First Samuel 2 30. He said, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Gather people, you honor me. Honor me, I honor you. That's a straight line equation. It's a linear equation. Harvest souls, you are honoring me. And honor me, I honor you. Pastor, an empty church, empty altar call, you dishonor me. Coordinate an empty home church, you dishonor me. Dishonor me, I dishonor you. And I can tell you, I have known a little bit of what it means for God to honor a person. We traveled to one country some time ago, and they came to pick us at the foot of the aircraft with a big limousine. Myself and my wife, a general, an army general, two star. A, a military general came, was the one that stood at the place. In fact, many people came and they drove us off from there. On our way back, we sat at the VIP place in, in on a, and then they took us again right to the foot of the aircraft to, to board the car. That, from that country, fly straight to Abuja. One man kept on looking at me, looking at my wife. I was wondering, what kind of man is this? Because he himself is VIP, but it is boss he followed <laughs> to be taken to the aircraft. We sat in the same lounge. But when it was time to go to the aircraft, we went by different means. As we arrived in Abuja, he looked at me and said, you are ambassador of which country, please? <laughs> I'm sure he should have said president, but he must have looked and said, but I haven't seen this face as a, a, a country president yet. <laughs> Take your seat. When God honors you, he kills reproach. He kills disgrace. When God honors you, he terminates insults. Out of your life, your destiny, he, he decks you with dignity. Honor beyond your qualification. Honor beyond your experience. Honor beyond your age. Honor beyond anything. Let me leave these three with you. Satisfaction. That is joy and fulfillment. Rewards. Honor. Honor. Dignity. And I want us to hit the road this year in the harvest. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I prophesy upon you the mantle of the harvest. The mantle of the harvester. The grace, the evangelistic grace. Receive it right now in Jesus' precious name. Now let's quickly round off. What do we do in making room? In making room for the harvest. What do we do? Number one, get, let's get more homes ready for, for multiplication. That's why I'm making room. More homes. The DHC leaders, the coordinators, 
within your district, make the continuous pool. And right in the, in the middle of, in the main church, we are going to make a pool. Every dynamis home church location is a branch of the church. Every dynamis home church location is an extension of the altar of this ministry. Whatever happens through this altar is permitted to happen there. Let's get more homes ready for multiplication. Secondly, let's get more leaders ready to anchor new homes. That is why I said that the home church leader, the assistant, the host, and then one other person from the home should be in, in this meeting. And every time we are having a dynamic home church leaders, that shall remain the order permanently. In fact, I would suggest that we have a home church leader, the assistant, and then two other people from the homes permanently. Am I communicating? Are the district coordinators and ministers hearing what I'm saying? Permanently, the home church leader, the assistant, two more people from the homes in preparation, in their training process to anchor new homes. Let's get more leaders ready to anchor new homes. Number three, let's increase follow-up effort for newcomer stability. Follow-up effort. We don't just allow people to come and go like that. In the Apple Crusade, I'm sure we, if we don't have any, any level of souls at all, we could have gotten up to maybe 500 people. Uh, 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 and, and, and we met with their leaders yesterday. And we said it is mandatory for these people to be made stable. Every effort you make to get one soul established in God is not a wasted effort. Never a wasted effort. Let's... let's Let's increase our follow-up effort on for new converts, new converts, not commas, both, both of them actually, for new converts stability. Very important. The fourth one is very important too, and I'm sure that there is an officer who's assigned. In fact, once it comes to the follow-up of new converts, it, it is the assignment of the whole home. Number four, let's increase our prayer effort. For both the harvest and the stability of souls. Prayer effort. The district prayer squad must meet weekly. District prayer squad. Preferably in the church premises. Any of the days. And now we are having prayer every night. Just maybe 30 minutes after the evening prayer session. Just, just the district prayer squad where, where the prayer is offered on behalf of the whole of the district. Area prayer meetings can hold as well. Within the homes, the, 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 the prayers, but it is important. It is not possible for souls to be saved without labor in prayer. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 said, My little children of whom I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. There is, there is the need for travail in order for souls to be planted. This is very, very important. Many times we go out on evangelism, we do everything, and we are wondering why the souls are not abiding. It is prayer that roots them. It is intercession that grounds them. It is, it is, it is intercession that, that, that delivers them from the distractions of the enemy. Very, very critical. L Going out for souls without praying for their stability is plus one minus one. That is, you have literally achieved nothing. In the ministry of Charles G. Finney, we heard that 80% of the converts in that ministry were stable. In the ministry of D.L. Moody, we heard that 60% were stable. Modern Pentecostal church is highest, maybe 40%. The difference is the, is the, is the bankruptcy of the intercession that establishes the souls. This is very important and I would like to, 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 to have a, a roster of the district prayer squad meetings. We, we, when is this district meeting and when is that meeting? And there is contributory membership from every cell in that district to ensure that the prayer is on. We can get the newcomer sleep per district and lay our hands on them on, on the days of such intercession. Very, very important. We increase our prayer effort for the harvest and stability of souls. And, and number five, 
let's increase our evangelistic drive in the neighborhood. Evangelistic drive in the neighborhood, getting in muscles. This is making room for the harvest. Make more homes ready for multiplication. Get more leaders ready to anchor homes. Increase the follow-up effort. Increase prayer effort. And now increase evangelistic drive. Maybe each, each location can come up with 20 new strategies or approaches, models, methods for, for soul winning. Maybe you say, okay, in this place we have a mechanic village, let's enter the mechanic place. Or this is a, a, high, a, a serious welfare place. Let, let's get some physical things to minister to people who are challenged and needy. Just, just, it, 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 just, just think out ways of dragging the people. And let us look at it as a rescue operation. Not necessarily a modality to grow church or to grow a home. Am I communicating? Let our passion be the rescue of lost people. The rescue of people who are on their way to hell. So when you think about it like that, then, they, then what to do will open up. The rescue of people who don't know God. The rescue of people on their way to hell. That was number five. Increase our evangelistic drive in the neighborhood. Number six, well, well, let's increase our welfare effort. Welfare effort for membership. Welfare effort for even newcomers. Let's, let, let it be on the increase. Welfare effort. Welfare effort does not necessarily mean that cash or kind, not necessarily. Someone gave birth in the hospital, everybody is there. Someone uh, has a challenge somewhere, everybody is there. And I, I want to appreciate the, the Dunamis Home Church because in this regard, so much work has been done and it has been done. The Lord bless all of us in the name of Jesus. I was so touched one time when one of our sisters was in labor and by 2 a.m. in the night in Kupwa, another sister left her house daring any risk and went to this person's house to attend to her and so on and so forth. The welfare effort is to be increased so that everybody feel at home. Now, in the main church, the church is so big that somebody can be passing through things and nobody is aware. But in the home, it is possible for everybody to, to, to be kept at home. And number seven, which is the final, let us make the homes welcoming to newcomers. Welcoming, welcoming, welcoming to newcomers. More interesting, more interactive. Welcoming, welcoming, welcoming. As much as possible, Let's make those who were there before and those who are just coming in to feel at home. Let us be delivered from a syndrome that is called koinonitis. Koinonia is fellowship. And there is a coinage in um, church growth verbiage they call koinonitis. Huh? As a medical doctor, I'll tell you it's an inflammatory disease. Huh? Where the old people say we have been here all the while. They are just so, they are together to themselves. And it's more like a reaction and a resistance of new people. Not, it is not, it is not overt. It's covered. It's not, it's not something that is, is active. It's something that is subterranean. It's, it, 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 it's not said. It's not spoken. It's not, they may not tell you, but. The way they interact with each other make you feel as if you are not welcome. It's a killer of growth. It's a killer of progress. Huh? Where's, oh, Sister Jane, how are you? Hi. The home cell today was interesting. Oh, God bless you. So how is everything? How was work today? Wow, God bless you. Wow. Ah, Brother Mike, the Lord bless you. Wow. You were not here last... Saturday, are you okay? Oh, God bless you. And then a new person come and wants to greet. Oh, how are you? So, like we're saying. <laughs> it's not correct at all. No matter who, never allow anybody to feel irrelevant. 
Never allow anybody to feel like a nuisance. Never. See, that is why some homes, people don't go there. They will come and disappear and go somewhere else within the same district. This one is growing, expanding, enlarging, but this one is drying up. It's meant to have been an old one, but it's, it's not thriving. Don't do that. How many of you know that since there is not one person here, I have members in this, in this place, we have members in this church who, who, who can speak my language and I speak their language. We have people here in this ministry on the altar in the church who can speak my language. There are pastors here who have been here for almost 20 years from the same place with me. I haven't spoken language with them once. Not one day. See how in a high seven, and other people are standing. What do you want to do? What you are trying to do is to let other people know that if I don't belong to your tribe, then I am not welcome. It's a killer of the future. 